Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I'm going to be using Bearware 2. There was a Bearware 1, but Bearware 2 has Halloween and Christmas in it, and Bearware goes with the all inside set with this darling bear. There is a die that makes his hands pop out so you can put things into his hands, but I like to just mask around them. So I just stamp it onto some masking paper, put the hands down, and then stamp something inside. And we have a whole new set oh, I'm so excited to play dress up with. Has a lot of Halloween stuff and a lot of Christmas stuff. And I'm gonna show you real quickly a Halloween card and a Christmas card that I did. So this is after my masking. I kind of did them both the same with the bear in the middle, but the hat didn't work out so well. I forgot to put it on first. So I'm gonna show you how I fixed that and color basically the whole image except for the background because the background yeah i'll tell you about that later but his hands i like i said i masked it off and then stamped the pumpkin in it and for the cauldron i wiped off the top part of the cauldron when i stamped it so that i would be able to put some bubbles in there and have them bubble up over this one was much easier to do my stamping on again i masked the hands so that i could put that put the tree in it and I did the hat first. I remembered this time <laughs> I did the snowman first. So those two would be in front of him. So let's start out with the Halloween version. See, I did his head first. When I did my stamping, I didn't decide to put the hat on first. Should have done that, but I'll show you how I fix that. This whole card actually, I'm not going to even have the footage for the whole thing because the background gets ridiculously crazy. I had a different plan for it. It didn't go there. <laughs> That's how it, how things go sometimes. They work out a little differently. So I decided I wanted to make a black bear who was going to be at his little cauldron, or her little cauldron, cooking up some pumpkin soup. And yes, it's pumpkin soup. It's not witch's brew because he's holding a pumpkin. So yeah, my little happy bear is just having a fun time cooking some fancy pumpkin soup. What I noticed was that I was having a lot of gray on here and I knew that this was going to be a very dark card because it's going to be for Halloween, but I had to start figuring out how to differentiate between all the different grays and blacks. So now I've got my hat on here, but the hat needs to pull out to the front. So I just drew right over top with a, my black Copic marker in order to create a hat that's out in front. Fortunately, it's black, so that works. If your hat's going to be another color, you have another issue. And for the eyes, I just drew them in inside the mask with a pen. And I'm trying now to figure out how I'm going to separate the bear from that cauldron, because the cauldron's also gonna get darker because it's supposed to be a black cauldron, and make the bear's body recede so the hands come out to the front. And I'm doing that with some darker colors around it. But be careful because black can turn into a giant blob eventually. And this whole card is going to be a giant blob, so let it serve as a warning to you to be careful. <laughs> so I'm keeping my bear in the cool grays, and I'm going to adapt the cauldron so that I get a little difference there. But I thought I'd entertain myself by putting my orange in there so you can wear an orange mask. And I'm using an E08 to add some rustiness to the cauldron. And then I'm going to mix it with some different kinds of grays, different gray colors. I'm going to use some black and some warm grays as well, because that's going to make it different than the bear in the background. And I even decided not to leave much of that highlight on there. I even knocked that back as I worked on it. And if you want to lighten this, if you get too much on there, you can also go in with a lighter color and pull more out of it which I'll do in a little bit. So you can keep changing it as you go, even though it's Copic marker, you can erase color that way. So the shadows on this, since it's coming up from the cauldron, are gonna be on the top. So the mask went dark and everything. And here's the lightening of the outside of the cauldron. You can, you can almost watch it pop in front of my bear because now it's a different color, slightly different color, and it's got a little more highlight on it. So I decided to move on to the other images in here, the little kitty cat. It's gonna be a, a black cat, sort of, but it's gonna have a little bit of a highlight on one side that's facing over toward the cauldron. And then the little bag with Moo on it will also have its shadow away from the cauldron. And then 
um, I decided to add a little bit of purple, like just a little touch of purple to the cauldron itself. So I probably should have added orange if he's making pumpkin soup, but there you go. And so now I'm speeding this up like a gajillion percent because it, it just took forever. And my intent was to use a, a technique that's similar to one that's in the autumn scenes class over at artclasses.com. And this sort of is, but boy, did it take a lot of layers. This was forever. Oh my gosh. Um, you'll learn how to make a beautiful fall tree, but not with a dark background. I hadn't tried this with a dark background. And I was layering colors and layering colors and layering colors. And I started out with the purple in the deep forest thinking that was going to work. I had to change that by going over it with more colors. And since I'd already started this, it was just a, yeah, it was a crazy bunch of whatever. And so it ended up being just about almost all black <laughs> after all of that. And sorry, my camera does do some funky things when there's that much black on the screen. So it's having trouble rendering the color very well. But I did add some highlights coming up from that cauldron using a white pen. The card came out really fun though in the long run, even though I didn't get to show you how to make a dark tree. Just try to keep layering those colors. That's what I talk about a lot is using a lot of ink and a lot of colors. And the top layer is a lot of black, just a lot of black. And there's a lot of grays in the background. Really fun to do, but very time consuming. But for those who want to try it give, it, give it a shot and tag me. I'd love to see your attempt. Now for the Christmas one, this is an experiment to try a bunch of different whites because at Christmas time we have snow, we have polar bears, we have all different kinds of things. So I'm using light browns for my polar bear. You can use any kind of flesh tones as well. If you're doing an animal that's in the midst of snow, sometimes it's nice to make the animal a little warmer so they look alive where all the snowy things have a little more bluish or grayish tint to them. That's just one, one option. So I'm using a couple of E's in order to get my shading on my bear done here. And then I'm gonna switch over to coloring snow. So like I said, snow can have blues in it. And this is a B2 one, which is a little less saturated than a B0. But watch what happens to that B2 as soon as I hit it with some B0 for that blending because you don't have a B2000. So you can use the B, uh, B0s with it. For the kitty, I wanted him to be a white kitty, but I thought, let's see what happens if we use the warm grays for him. And he doesn't look as alive as the polar bear, but you know, it's, it's another difference. So it looks like you have something different going on in the two different types of white. So add a little red and green to the card, of course. I'm not even gonna add any shading to those and you'll see at the end, it won't matter because when you pay attention to the shading on some things, it won't matter if you don't pay attention to the shading on the little things. So do the, do the important stuff and give yourself the chance to be successful at that. The shadow down here is a B4 plus some B000. So again, it's a little even dimmer color than the B21. But, uh, but I still mixed it with the B000. For the trees, I'm giving them extra branches coming off of them. This is the tree that's in the stamp set. And I'm just making a whole bunch of different branches. You can make them giant trees with lots and lots and lots of branches. In the Halloween one, the trees went all the way across and touched each other and melded into each other. So you can do as many or as few as you want. Just make them irregular and you can make some of them cross each other and stuff. Really doesn't matter a whole lot. Trees are quite, uh, I guess, messy when you're talking about the branches. Look at a picture of a, a bare tree and you'll see kind of the structure of a tree if you're looking to make it accurate. And then I'm going to put a little bit of color into my tree trunks and I'm actually using the E4s which are a little bit of a dull-ish kind of color because I'm going to have a lot of snow on them. And then I'm going to put some BV20 in the back. You can use any different kind of color but this is a blue violet and it's a not so saturated blue violet. A lot of the BVs that I use for other things are BV zeros and they're a much brighter purplish color and this one is a little duller so I wanted something in the background just so that the things in the front would look white and the snow that I put on the tree would look white by comparison 
So a lot of contrast is by putting one color behind something and another color in front of it, and then you can see the difference between them. Because see, if I had put all these little snowy lines on my branches while the uh, background was white, you wouldn't have seen anything. I am adding a little more snow in areas where there's a V shape. So think about where the snow would sit when it rests on that tree branch. And then I'm just gonna pop a whole bunch of white dots all over everything. Make sure you put it in front of the images themselves and cover some of the lines just here and there. Break up some of those stamp lines because it will actually look like there's snow in front of it if that line and all the images have snow right over top of them. Just avoid eyeballs so you don't get your, uh, your snow in a weird place. So there we go. There is the finished winter version of Bearware 2. These are really fun to play dress up with. There's a scarf for them and all different kinds of funny things. And many ways to dress them up. And here is one more version. I decided to do a simpler one using one of the Autumn Scenes lessons. So for those who are in the class, you can use this bear to give him a wonderful scene to sit and hug his kitty and pet him and love him and love him and pet him. And isn't that cute? <laughs> anyway, I will see you guys next time. There's a link on the screen to that class if you're interested in fall scenes. There will be some Christmas scenes classes coming soon. And yeah, that's about it. I will see you guys later. Have a great day. And most of all, go make something. Go color something beautiful. See ya.